los vídeos sin convenience. Eh, bueno, I'm Alejandra from the University of Valladolid, and the work I will present here is the work uh, we made uh, two years ago with Chus, which is at the back side of the room, uh, in her PhD. But uh, when we were invited to present works to this classy, uh, uh, we were asked to, uh, to present um, applications of learning analytics to education, to practical experiences. And because she did a lot of work with uh, teachers and with practical experiences, I'm here because I, I was one of the teachers. So this is why I am the presenter. But the main, you know, if you have any question or you want to like buy or anything, choose will be better choice than me. <laughs> Well, as Teresa has already taught uh, some minutes ago, uh, now in our learning environments, normally especially at the university, we are working with uh, blended learning environments that are characterized because students and teachers work in different locations with multiple interactivity types. We are using not only the BLEs like Moodle, Sakai, etc., etc., but also uh, other tools that are integrated with our work and if they are more or less integrated with the rest of the BLE we call them distributed learning environments where interactions happen in many different places. They are different, difficult to capture no? altogether. And uh, in our group, in our research, we are working in how the computers can support uh, collaborative learning. In this case, collaborative supported collaborative learning computer supported collaborative learning where we have different social levels of interaction and multiple interactivity types. Some of them are in front of the computer, some of them are mediated through the computer, etc. And this leads to many different challenges to learning analytics. Some of them are here listed. The, the first one would be in this context where interactions happen in many different tools, many different parts, we have the problem of dirty and incomplete data. So we have to make sure that uh, the analysis is aware of this incompleteness. Data is not complete, we cannot derive many, many you know, things from data that are not of good quality. And uh, maybe we have to be aware of that and make aware of that to the user, the teacher, the students, or the administrator. We need to contextualize. Because of this, in, partially because of these uh, problems with the data, we need to contextualize the analysis so that it's easier or it's better interpreted. You know? The interpretation is more uh, valid. We also have a problem if we are going to use learning analytics to support teachers in their work. Uh, we have to take into account uh, teachers' workload. They are very, they are very busy and they don't have the time to do very deep analysis. And uh, they need help to interpret the results. We cannot provide them with very complex uh, visualizations that are difficult to interpret even for research. We need to help them to um, provide them things that are foldable. No? And uh, all these issues, there are some ethical issues that have been discussed this morning by Truth as well, uh, regarding, for example, data validity, uh, potential adverse impact on the use of learning analytics if we are not uh, a little bit cautious about what are we doing with learning analytics results, and so on. No? In this context, and um, taking into account these um, challenges, uh, Chus did a big, large research work uh, whose main approach was to integrate scripting and monitoring, meaning that um, we think that uh, if we provide teachers with monitoring support that is connected to what the teachers have in mind, this could be these markers that uh, the previous um, talk was telling us. No? If the teachers have some edu makers in mind about what are they waiting or what are they um, expecting of their classes, and we provide them with monitoring support regarding those markers, 
and this will be more meaningful and more easy to interpret that other things that we can provide. This is part of the story. This is not a full story, but more or less, we are thinking on integrating scripting design and monitoring for learning analytics. In this context, uh, the script that uh, define the whole educational process have to be also aware of the monitoring because sometimes we need to to, to store, to log data that afterwards will be analyzed. So even the tool has to know in advance which kind of data uh, it has to store for later analysis. So we define this model, uh, uh, propose the, the also a design process where teachers reflect about the monitoring needs they will have, providing a script and some configuration about the future monitoring. We also, we also define an architecture to integrate the data coming from the different tools in the context of distributed learning environments. And finally, and this is more the focus of uh, this talk, this uh, short time and music now, uh, a monitoring process that's aware of the pedagogical intentions of the teacher. This is the script aware monitoring process of CSPL scenarios. Uh, this provides to the teacher monitoring information aware of what the teacher had in mind about what was he or she expected about the learning process. Uh, well, the research process followed a DBR approach, design-based research approach, and this is characterized by iterative research. Uh, it is heavily situated in educational contexts. Uh, in partnership between the researcher and the practitioners and uh, with a heavy focus on design and testing, testing significant uh, interventions no? and the use of mixed methods of evaluation. So this very strong emphasis in practice, in applying research to practice, is what, uh, why, we are, why I am here, no? because uh, choose uh, my Jesus uh, proposals were tested in real courses where we really were wondering how to improve our monitoring needs. And um, this is more or less all the studies that uh, she carried out. There were five exploratory case, stu case studies, studies and two evaluative studies. All of them were carried out in higher education, in at the University of Valladolid, and uh, the two that uh, were uh, the last two studies were to evaluate the proposals. Uh, one of them was characterized this one for um, to well, it was applied to a course with uh, 165 students, so it was a huge course uh, with a um, jigsaw kind of uh, collaborative pattern, where uh, well the Learning flow was not so difficult to follow, but there were many students. So it was difficult for the students, for the teacher, to follow, to track all the activities made by the students. She needed extra information to know whether all the groups were providing the right information on time no? for the learning activity to succeed. And the other evaluation study was that one that's uh, there at the right side of the Side. That was uh, me as a teacher. I had uh, more fewer students. It was 15 students, but it was very condensed uh, uh, collaborative activity with many, many different activities that were carried out in, in the in two weeks. And it was very, very um, demanding, regarding monitoring and support. I had to know uh, every day, almost every day, if the students had read the documents, had submitted uh, the first version of the document, if, if it was going to be possible that the two students worked together because they had both presented previously what they had done before, etc. No? So that may be another different type of study that was interesting. What we need? This is more or less uh, well, a very complex uh, graph of all the things that uh, uh, were involved in Maria Jesus' uh, 
PhD, but uh, I will try to explain a little bit how was the process. Uh, at, in the left hand side, in hand side, is the design process where we did it in two different steps. The first one, Jules uh, and the researcher and the teacher worked together to define the characteristics of the activity that could have uh, influenced the monitoring. Uh, this was made at the beginning with a normal form, not, uh, it was a structure following a conceptual uh, model made by Maria Jesus, attending to different characteristics of the activity that can have um, an influence in the monitoring afterwards. This has been afterwards uh, automated in a tool that was uh, produced by by Jesus as well. In parallel to this process, uh, we used uh, other tools we have for um, uh, automating the design of the activities called collage um, groups that, uh, for example, here we can have an overview of uh, how it looks the collaborative activity that I was going to uh, enact with my students. It was a pyramid where students at the beginning worked in pairs, then in groups of four and then all together. And uh, within the different stages, uh, they had to make different kinds of activities that depend one from the previous ones. No? Every activity had some dependencies. With all this information, we had a, a script enriched with monitoring information. Thanks to this script, the GLIMPS tool, could know in advance which kind of information it had to take from, from the logs uh, to analyze whether the activities, the interactions that uh, were happening in the classroom while the students were interacting with the different tools were not um, the expected interactions, no? where the activity was running as expected or something was going wrong. So, um, Glimpse is the monitoring tool we can see, no? that uh, takes this information and makes a comparison. And Glimpse is based in a set of restrictions. The, this is very dirty, but it's uh, an example of the restrictions it uses. Uh, Glimpse has heuristics of restrictions that define whether an action that is locked in the system has to be selected or not for the analysis and some heuristics that define the current state of the interaction regarding participation, collaboration with form group formation and expected use of resources, and the desired state of interaction that's defined in the script. It compares both and provides the last part of the, uh, of the chain of the experience, that's the monitoring to the teacher. Uh, as you can see, this is not very visual, but it's quite um, easy to, to interpret. It's a table, uh, here we have uh, the groups and the students. In the middle we have uh, the different sources of information used by GLIMPS. That include information coming from the students by themselves, from the different tools used by the system, like the VLE or the group, Sorry, of uh, Wiki, uh, Web 2 tools, and also from the teacher's observations. As you can see, we integrate or we use integrate information coming from the tool and from the people that are interacting. And with this information, for example, uh, Clims is able to detect issues that are not really, you know, as suspected. Like, for example, here, one student didn't access a document that was needed for carrying out the activity. Once this is uh, detected, it provides a warning to the teacher. And the warning is not saying, you know, this student has not done whatever. The warning is a little bit more humble. It's like, there is no evidence that this student has access to the document. Because it may happen that the student has access to the document. Some colleague has given it to him. That's it. No? 
So the teacher has to test it, but uh, he has some information that can be used to, to monitor. So we did the evaluation. I will skip this because I'm in red time. <laughs> uh, we followed, um, uh, well, as you can see, this is a PhD work, so it's a little bit uh, you know, formal evaluation with many topics and so on, with many different sources of information for providing the evaluation. And I will go to the, to the last issue that was whether this monitoring support was useful for the teacher. No? And uh, well, what we saw is that the teachers participated in the into the experience, is me and another colleague, <laughs> uh, considered that the reports were easy to interpret. The information provided was generally accurate, although, of course, it was not really very deep. Eh? The kind of information we provide with this approach is uh, about uh, accesses to documents and things of that um, uh, level of uh, depth. So uh, that points to a possible improvement no, into the, in the approach. So this is what we say here. And uh, maybe uh, what is more interesting here is that uh, in the end, what we saw is that uh, this approach to analytics is very humble. The kind of information we provide to the teacher it's very simple and based on very basic actions provided by the different tools. But it's, it's really uh, appreciated by the people that are receiving it. Um, the fact that the teachers intervene in the definition of the, um, of the future indicators makes them more aware of which kind of information they have to take into account, which kind of things they have to monitor. And um, this, is in the end, although it's not very sophisticated data analysis, has positive impact in issues related to ethics, no? like data validity, responsibility, and elimination of potential affairs. That's it. Sorry for... <laughs> well, and as I told you, uh, this is mainly choose uh, work, so you can access there for further information. Yeah. If you have any question. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, how do you think about to provide uh, analytics about the design process? I mean, one of the most important challenges in this topic, I think, is uh, the process of creating learning, collaborative learning designs. I, I know you have worked with brain teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, and this teacher, I suppose, uh, they have created many learning designs. Mm -hmm. So you can think about how to provide uh, analytics, not about the learning process, but about the design process of the teacher. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, there are many connections between learning in analytics and learning designs that are now being, you know, envisioned, I would say, and that's one of them. That would be very interesting. <laughs> Indeed, in these cases, uh, the one run by Alejandra, one of them was a refinement of the previous scenario, and the lessons learned from the original one were taken into consideration for the second. So, indirectly, although it was not envisioned that we were going to, to apply such a very analytical results, we, we, the, the situation came up to, to be like this, like, okay, since uh, we already knew about the constraints and the problems that we, we could find uh, due to the original design, we were changing some things in order to avoid such, such problems, like giving some more time between the activities that could be complicated in order to have time to, to send a, a reminder to the teachers, or to the students in this case, and this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Although the problem in this kind of scenario is that sometimes you don't have enough information, like and historical from previous uh, designs or other colleagues. So you really need to have a point where you are sharing learning design so that you can compare and get some yes. mm -hmm. You also can use the data from the students. For example, if the students, the performance of the students in an activity can be was wrong or was right. Yeah. It would be a need to improve the designs. Okay. 
Thank you very much. I think it's time to <laughs> listen to the next. Uh...